What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? No Zoop for you here, and I have a final review of the Tier 9 German Cruiser Aegir. And this is kind of an interesting ship, because we've got the Odin, which is a battleship at Tier 8 with 305mm guns, and we have the Aegir at Tier 9, which is a cruiser with 305mm guns. So... Very big difference right there. I mean, just in the way they play, but you've got the same guns. It's kind of intriguing why they went this route. So we're going to get into that a little bit. Think heavy cruiser, maybe pocket battleship. I don't know. I mean, she handles nice. She's, she's a cruiser. So in the same vein of the Alaska and ships like that, though, is she as good as the Alaska? I don't know. We'll get into that after some stats of the ship. First and foremost, hit points 62,850, which is actually more than the tier 8 battleship Odin. Artillery, already covered the main guns. You've got nine 305 millimeter guns. Secondaries, though, you're not looking at your German secondaries there. So if you're hoping for 11 kilometer range, don't. Torpedo tubes, you've got four launchers on each side, six kilometer range, 65 knots. Your AA comes in at 87 out of 100, so it's not spectacular, but it's not that bad. I mean, it, it will dissuade some aircraft from attacking you, but you're not going to shoot down tons and tons of airplanes. For your maneuverability, your maximum speed is 35.2 knots with Sierra Mike's. And you've got a turning circle radius of 880 millimeters and a rudder shift time of 14 seconds. You do feel pretty nimble and pretty quick, which is one of the nicer aspects of this ship. Your concealment, you're looking at 11.9 kilometers, which, you know, that's overall pretty good. Egg gear is available for 1 million free XP. And while that might sound like a lot of free XP, we all know right now that you can accrue it pretty quickly. So this is one of those ships that if you want, even if you don't think you're going to enjoy it, it's pretty much within the realm of possibility for you to get in a short amount of time. So wouldn't worry about not getting it in the amount of a lot of time because a million free XP at this point is like candy if you've got plenty of flags. So let's talk a little bit about the Egg Gear and how I think she handles and what I think about it overall before going into whether or not she's worth that free XP. First and foremost, I've touched on the guns. 305 millimeters, exact same as the Tier 8 Odin, which was nerfed to the point that a lot of people weren't too happy about it. Now, the ships look very similar in many ways, and I, I kind of wonder how the Odin would work at Tier 9. Obviously, it's not going to be that good. It's hard enough playing the Odin if you're bottom tier to Tier 8. So, that kind of gives you an idea about the Aegir, because the Aegir has the exact same guns. The one thing that the Aegir has is more hit points, and it's got better maneuverability. And quite honestly, this ship does handle pretty good. I found that this ship is best to use in a way in which you're kiting, in which you're constantly on the move, you're skirting the outskirts of the map, you're flanking, doing all that good stuff. Your AP is decent enough that you can peg other German battleships. I, I mean, it's, it's not bad, but still, it feels weak in the same sense that the Odin feels weak in its guns obviously because they're the same guns the same caliber so I, I i don't know i i feel very strange about this ship part of me likes it a lot part of me says it has kind of that hindenburg feel to it in a way where you know you can just fly about the map flinging he flinging ap and everything else but part of me also is like <sighs> As a tier 9 heavy cruiser, it really doesn't offer me anything over something like the Alaska, for instance. And I, I would put the Alaska far above the Aegir. At least that's my opinion. Now, that's not to say that the Aegir isn't a good ship. I mean, I, I think she's decent, but I, I think she's kind of lacking in what she has to offer. I think the guns, while, you know, it's nice having 305mm guns, it's it's a heavy cruiser, so I would expect that. Really, all she has going for her, in my opinion, is that speed and her ability to kite. 
I mean, when you talk about the guns and the HE chance on these things, I mean, that's not even that spectacular. I mean, HE, you're looking at, well, 30%. And, I mean, yeah, that's, that's about average for a ship of this type. And I found that I was starting fires even less. And that HE percentage chance right there, that 29%, is adding the uh, demo expert to it. So, I, I don't know. The other thing about the HE is your maximum damage, just in my opinion, isn't that great. 3,600, and your AP shell damage, maximum for that's 9,100. Shell velocity, while you feel like your guns are flat, it's still 865 meters per second, which is on the slower side. It's not German rail guns. And reload time, 17.6 seconds. <sighs> Maybe if it was down around the 15 second range, I, I might consider the ship to be highly worthy, but I, I don't know. I, I just feel like damage output could be a lot better. I mean, I play fairly well in this ship. I, I don't have any issues playing in this ship. I, I guess this style of cruiser suits me, but I think a lot of players might be expecting something a little more powerful in this ship, and you're not going to get it. This is not an Alaska. You don't have heavy AP. You don't have heavy HE that just wrecks things when it hits it. I mean, the guns have a much lighter feel. I mean, it's pretty accurate, but I, I don't know. Personally, I, I think that there are better options at this tier. And talking about that in the armory, I mean, there, there are some free XP ships still available. Actually, I, I take that back. There really aren't a lot available. I mean, you've got the Alaska and the Azuma, and those are both 1 million free XP. Honestly, out of the three, I would probably pick the Alaska. I mean, Azuma... Actually, I think the Azuma is even better than the Aegir. I, I really do. I think it's HE hits a lot harder. you got those torpedoes, which go a lot further. Uh, but out of the three, I think Alaska is the best bet. So if you have not purchased any of these ships yet using your free XP, I would probably not go for the Egg Gear. I would go for the Alaska first, and then I would choose the Azuma, and then the Egg Gear. And, and I'm not saying the Egg Gear is a horrible ship. It's not a horrible ship. It's not even a bad ship. And I, I think it's, it's comfortable. It's a comfortable ship. I, I think it's perfectly adequate. I, I would say average, but, you know, that would be a little unfair. I think the egg gear is adequate. So, you know, Wargaming was nice enough. They were kind enough to give me this ship to review and provide you with a final review. And as always, you know, I try to balance these reviews in a way that kind of gives every class a player an idea of how it works and how they'll play in it. So, you know, usually... It, it's it's pretty simple. The Unicum players are going to do really good. The average player is going to do average. And the poor players, or I hate saying poor, um, the casual player, as I like to call casual players, um, which is a much kinder term, uh, though some players do readily admit they're not good at this game. <laughs> and and to them, I, you know, I do credit them with the self-deprecation. But, you know, I, I think Unicom players aren't really going to find that much utility out of this ship. I mean, they'll, they'll do good in it, but I don't think they're going to be able to eke out quite as much as they would in the Alaska. Average players, average to good players, I think are, are going to find this ship lacking as well, uh, at least in the DPM. And just the guns, I, I don't think they're going to enjoy it quite as much as something like the Alaska or the Azuma even, because the Azuma... You know, it's a lot more comfortable in that you can just hang back and fire your HE from a distance and do pretty good damage. And the, I guess, casual players probably won't like this ship at all. So, I mean, I, I'm sure there's an audience for it. I'm sure the audience is going to be players that love German ships and enjoy German ships. But outside of that, I, I don't see why many players would take this over in Alaska. I just don't. So I would go for the Alaska first, and then, you know, most likely Azuma. But if you got to have the German ship, you can get the German ship. And once again, this isn't a horrible ship. I mean, it's a, it's a solid it's a solid C. It's a solid seven. I mean, you can do perfectly fine in it. It's a good kiting ship. Uh, but 
I wouldn't expect miracles out of it, and I wouldn't expect it to exceed your expectations. So, that's just my thoughts on the egg ear. As always, check everybody else's reviews out, see what they have to say, watch their play styles, how they use the ship, and you know, if it kind of matches your own play style, that gives you a better idea. It might tell you whether or not the ship's going to be good. So, I'm just one out of many opinions, and my opinion is the ship is adequate. It's nothing special, but it's not horrible or by, by any stretch of imagination. So, that's your egg ear. I might have one to give away in the future. Once again, Wargaming provided me this ship for a review, and they might provide me one to give to you all. So, um, it is worth having if it's free. I will give it that. Anyhow, hope you all are doing wonderful. I'll catch you all later. Zoop out.